Okay, so last episode there'll be a I got up top if I want to check it out. But last episode we got we started the game and we basically met all the four girls: Sayuri, Yuri, eh, Sayuri, Natsuki, Yuri, and Monica. And in this game you have to choose which girl you want to impress with your poem skills. So anyway, I've made my decision. It only took me five seconds and I've already made it. Sayuri, she's a friend, so friend zone. Natsuki, she's a sundari, not really my type. Monica. She was never really an option anyway. But Yuri, she's totally my type. Quiet, mature, big, hearted, and yeah, totally my type. Anyway, let's continue. All right, I just need to make the most of my circumstances and make sure a good fortune will find me. I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. It's time to write a poem. Pick the words of your favorite club member will, that your favorite club member will like. What did you say? Something good might happen with whoever likes a poem the most. Okay, so basically... See? Monica's not even an option, that's sad. Anyway, so basically we have to choose words that, that, I, that any of these people... I mean, that these... The words you choose that they will like the most, that means you will spend time with them like during the club so I'm trying to spend time with Yuri cause she's waifu whisper nope that's not ski damn it hopeless that's a nightgown damn it I'm trying to pick Yuri words <laughs> uh order okay there we go wrath Sc scars damn it fear Damn it, I'm trying to pick Yuri words, not say Yuri words. Misfortune. We need to really check on her. Passion. Vivacious. Whirlwind. Okay, we're getting the hang of it. Incapable. Heaven sent. Philosophy? Okay, we're getting the hang of it, guys. <laughs> Secretive. Existence. Agonizing. Aftermarriage. So basically, just pick the most vivid, just pick the most exotic sounding words. And I think we did it! Hey again, Thorny! Glad to see you didn't run away on us! <laughs> uh, nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I'll keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Thorny. I hope this isn't overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not a scum accustomed to it? Oh come on, he doesn't deserve any slack. Sayuri told me you don't even want to join the any clubs this year. And last year too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take this seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you have a certainly big mouth for someone who keeps our manga collection in the club room. But, but, but. Natsuki finds herself stuck, stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry guys. Tony always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without, even me, without me even asking. Like cooking and cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayuri. That's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come you and Tony become, can become good friends too? I mean, she ain't wrong, Yuri, you know, you can meet you and me can be friends, you know, maybe even more, more than friends if you want. Um, Sayori. Hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know? Wait, Sayori. Huh? Me? Uh, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? N never mind. She already made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Huh? 
I'm sorry, Yuri, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. Um, it'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into a bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it'll keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you, if you want to. This is... How is a girl accidentally being so cute? She picked out a book she thinks I like, despite me not reading so much. Yuri, thank you, I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book, and I can't help but notice the intense expression like she's waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is ramaging around in the closet. I'm really curious, I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, but at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I'll catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It seems to be the same one. It seems to look like the same book she lent to me. More than that, it seems to be on the first few pages. Ah? I think she looked. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks a glance at me and our eyes met for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensingly I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. I'm just reading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Hmm? I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Ah. Well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean... It just happened, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about anyway? Well, hmm. Yuri closes the book and scans the eye over, eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait, Portrait of Markov. It's a very ominous eye symbol on the front cover. Alright. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost younger sister. But as soon as she does, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... It's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was gonna be a nice story, so that dark turn came out of nowhere. Ahaha! <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are uh, you not a fan of that sort of thing, Thorny? Also, did I mention that I know what's gonna happen in this game, so... No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy these kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot what that Yuri was into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It just makes those kinds of stories. They challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants it to be evil, but because they want it because they have their own goals and their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you related, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they made out to be the naive one, letting their one-sided mortals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. 
I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think I need to worry. You need to worry. It just means you're passionate about reading. And the least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Ah, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well start get started reading it, right? You, you don't have to. Uh, what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book from that I had put in my bag. Alright, is it fine if I sit here, right? I slip it to the seat next to Yuri's. Aha! Yeah, are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright, I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel a presence over my shoulders as I read. It's not particularly a bad thing, it's kind of a good thing low key. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry, it was just... Yuri, you, d you really apologize a lot, don't you? I, I do? I didn't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my guess until it's up against Yuri. Then I hold the book between... Book more between the two of them. Huh? I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each learn... Watch we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. But feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I'm using my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Ooh, different angles. <laughs> Yuri takes her left arm, then holds the left side of her, the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. The way that I turn the page and Yuri slides under the th her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Huh? To turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a little bit distracted for a second. I glance over to Yuri's face again and her eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. I actually didn't even notice she's smiling at me. That's probably the least I can do, since you've been patient with me. Yeah, thanks. We continue reading. You really no longer ask me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she's finished the page finished the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning the page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb chanting over the page, letting her flutter over her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey Yuri, this might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more Blunt in a lot of ways, ooh, ooh, he's dissing her and he doesn't even know it. She also second guesses all of her things and she says that she says and does. She's like afraid she'll do any something wrong. It's not like I can't see into a, your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I see. You really remain silent for a moment. But Thorny! That's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, that's so embarrassing that you think of that of me. Wait, wait. I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I, I, I guess I more meant that it's kind of cute. 
Uh huh. What are you What are you saying all of a sudden? I okay, everyone. Huh? I think it's about time we share our today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait so too long. Ah, Yuri excels speed of finishing her thought. Is that all right, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been if you haven't been looking forward to this. Uh, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. All right. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer it if I only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much to pref of a preference either way. Hmm? In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters, chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then, and then slip it back into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah, my relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I could really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, uh, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Sayuri and Monica enthusiastic, enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayuri is, is on a wrinkled sheet, loose leaf, torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? I'm gonna say Sayuri. I definitely, I'm definitely most comfortable sharing with, with Sayuri first. She's my good friend after all. This is a good poem, Thorny. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. Of course it's not that good. My guy would be writing poems in my spare in his spare time. Uh, I guess you're right, but that's why I'm impre why it impressed me. Well to be honest, I was afraid you wouldn't do it seriously. Or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy you wrote one. It just reminds me that you're really part of my, the, the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll, I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Thony. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for you, other people? That's something only a really good people would do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure you, if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's the part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah, and I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here. That'll be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, The way you glow through my blinds in the morning makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making it up the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret but I trust you too. If I wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I am not mad. I want breakfast. Sayuri, this is just a guess but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No. Just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least it makes me feel a little better about myself. <laughs> Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Ah, yeah. I didn't mean to say it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last night. I'm with eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school, it's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. 
That's a life lesson. It's bad to skip breakfast. So eat your breakfast, unless you're fasting. But still make sure you eat something for the day. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. But next time I won't forget. I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Okay, let's show Monica. Hi, Thorny. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Does she mean she's always listening to the microphone? Does that mean she can hear me or something? Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'm afraid to bring things up. Much better of just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share a poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Thorny. We're all a little bit embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier we all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Great job, Thorny. I was going ooh and ah in my head while I was reading it. Was it really metaphorical? I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That's why it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> Even laugh. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that you really like this kind of poems, right? I mean, this writing kind, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when the readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very really challenging to write like that effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it by, just by feeling, or letting, pe or letting them deeply analyze all the nuances. If I edit every line bad, I'm sorry. It can take years to practice. I'm assuming Yuri has it at this point. I never really asked though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take time before I feel comfortable doing this. It's okay. I'd love to see you trying new things. This is the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little biased towards their own kinds of styles. But I'll always help you find out what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. Doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read then. Hole in the wall. Could it have been me? See the direction the speckle prot protrudes? A nosy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. Appear inside for a clue. No. I can't see, a real blind. Like a film left out in the sun, but it's too late. My deadness. Already scorched with a permanent copy of a meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright, it was too deep. Stretching forever into everything, a hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in, I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. Does the whole represent life? Because you know a whole of infinite choices. Because you, you know in life we have infinite choices. We can do whatever we want. And uh, does the whole represent like choosing a wrong choice in life, or realizing that life is basically meaningless? <laughs> So what do you think? It's very free form, if that's what you call it. 
Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can really be powerful. What's the, what was the inspiration behind this one? Ah. Well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say I had a kind of epiphany recently. I could tell. I had been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is best friends with each other. Anyway. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. She gives writing tips? Sometimes when you write a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. So if you try out to make it perfect, then you will never be able to make any process. Just force yourself to get something down on a paper and tidy it up later. Another way, think it about it like this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, let's give it to Yuri this time, because I actually made it for her, obviously. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Huh? What was that? Huh? Did I say that out loud? Yuri covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. I... Ooh... He's going to hate me. Um... You really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Huh? That's... I, I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? Aha! Yuri takes a breath. So... What kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicate you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. It's actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at the poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words of the poem, as if taking it down more thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there's a specific writing habits that usually typical usually are typical for new writers. And having been through that myself, I've learned to pick up one of them. On pick up on them. I think the most noticeable noticeable thing is I recognize in new writers is that their style that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter and they form fit the two together. The end result is both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds a train of thought, it's as if she's uh, demeanor changes. Her stammer is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into a sim to writing a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is the possible most challenging part. I might take you some time, but it all comes with the practicing and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little biased though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry, that's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to, uh, to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thoughts pro thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily. As if that's a real opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, the, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. The trendles of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green blue of the future. Battle, bath, calm, breathing air of the present but living in the past, the light flickers. I flicken back. I'm sorry, I have a such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Way better than mine. Huh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. 
even though his shoot was really descriptive. Wasn't too short? I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Mm-hmm. Actually, the story isn't about ghosts at all, Thorny. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it one after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and expressiveness in their work. Experience in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolic compared to a ghost, lingering in the past, remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more, so I'm putting it that way. I haven't even thought of that. That's impressive. Huh? It's nothing really. Yours was impressive, so impressive too, so I'm pretty sure my poem was just 20 words. And they just be like, yeah, that's good. I like those words. <laughs> nah. If anything, I could possibly learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Ah. You know, I wasn't really nervous about doing all this. But in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, though. Ah. Me too. Last and... Natsuki. I almost said last and least. <laughs> That would have been that way to say. Tony, if you're not going to take this club seriously, then go home. What? Harsh? What? You expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? Do you really think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put in effort. I had to pick like 20 words. We all start somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Mm. Painful to think about, ain't it? Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I tell you what to improve, but you're better off try just trying again. Fair enough. Well, to each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. I told you you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because... Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing other people around you doing great things can be easily disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then I made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling of that last line. So you did. I guess more went to do into it than I realized. Yeah, that's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did it? Did you? Yeah, I guess, guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. <sighs> I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're trying to be nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of the expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows follow in frustration, meanwhile Yuri smiled sadly. What's with this language? Huh? Did, did you say something? 
Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you can say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can it be cute? I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Huh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but that really came out didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm? If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Thorny did too. So based on that, I'd gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me? I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon. Unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. Hmm? And Tony liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Yuri suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh? That's not what I... Uh, y you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Tony appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? How would you know he, he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... no. If I was full of myself, I wouldn't have deliberately go out of my way to do everything so overly cutesy. God damn! Ooh? Um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I was the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Tony started showing up. Natsuki? Uh, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting guys. Suddenly both girls turn towards me as if they just noticed that I was standing there. Tony? Sh she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out of the reader and not force them to have to figure it out. Let me explain that to her, Tony. Wait. Is the reason we have so many deep expressive words in our language the only way to come to convey the complex feelings and meanings of the most uh, meaning the most effectively avoiding them is only unnecessary limiting limiting yourself it's also a waste you understand that right Tony um well how did I get right into the situation in the first place it's not like I know anything about writing in fact I know nothing about writing but whoever I agree with will probably think more highly of me of course that is going to be Sayori Help me! Help me! Please! Natsuki? Natsuki glares at me dying, drying up any words I had in my mouth. Instead I turn to Yuri. Yuri? But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori? Huh? Yeah. Everyone's fighting and it's making Sayori uncomfortable. How can you two keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Thorny? Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I agree. This is unfair to others who interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell you how much of a stuck-up jerk she is being, she would never. It's your immaturity that made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why... This is exactly why nobody likes... Stop! Hmm? Natsuki, Yuri... You guys are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and, and be happy. My friends are wonderful people, and I would laugh at them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems, they are amazing because they give so many feelings with just a few words. And his poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? B because, well, also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as always, as they always were. Big and beautiful. I agree. Live a like if you agree. <laughs> Sayuri. <laughs> Shady stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So this is why Sayori's vice president. I whispered to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest. I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. Ah ha ha. Nah. It's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, 
I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an earhead sometimes, but it's, but it's really suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would like to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica sal smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to nod. She's such a genuine person, really make, does make a good place and regard, regardless of what she says. If only I could get a chance to talk with her a little more. Okay everyone, it's just about time for us to leave. How did everyone feel about seeing their poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright, well, mostly. Tony, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learned something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, did I learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes? But then in luck that means I'll, I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I know to myself with a newfound determination. Thorny? Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> she already beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayuri and I have spent so much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayuri? About what happened earlier. Uh, what do you mean? You know, the fight between Yuri and Atsuki. Does that thing happen often? No, 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 no. It's really the first time I've ever seen a fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, no, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Thorny, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you getting along with everyone else makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's... <laughs> Every day is gonna be so much fun. <sighs> it looks like Sayuri still hasn't caught on to the kinds of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayuri. I pat Sayuri on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than her. But it's easily to use Sayori as well as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay, yeah. Let's do this.